Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this Saturday, June 29th. Tomorrow's the 30th. Time for a new background on Monday, folks. Praise God. It, uh, it's uh, Saturday, June 29th, 2024. It is 2.40 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record. Continue praises to God for all his blessings. No matter how small we may think, even the ones we don't remember, we continue to praise God. I praise God for each and every one of you. I continue to thank you guys for joining the comments, the subscribes, the thumbs up, all that stuff, guys. It helps us grow, not just me. I cannot emphasize that enough. That pure surrender and humility just being used for God's glory. Same with you guys watching this. It edifies you and benefits you, and I hope it feeds you. I truly do. But guess what? That's still for God's glory because God can still use you. Amen. But thank you so much for joining today. Today's title, The Comforter. The Comforter. And I, folks, I already knew who we were going to be talking about, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Um, our scriptures today, our lead-off verse is John 16, verse 7. In the King James, what I have highlighted is John 16, 5 through 11. In the New Living, I like the way it's worded, and I may read a couple of those, some things that jumped out at me that I just want to share with you. But uh, John 16, 7 in the King James, the word of God says this, and I believe this is all in red. This is Jesus himself. I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Jesus telling his disciples, look, I know you don't want me to go. You really don't understand where I'm going, but I've got to go. If I do not go, I cannot send the very essence of God the Father that's in me right now down upon you. Look at this. I Man, guys, I love this background. It looks like that dove's getting ready to land on my back, just like Jesus. It's all four accounts of the gospel when he was baptized by John the Baptist. It says the Holy Spirit descended upon him. The, the, the spirit of God, like a dove, like a dove. And then I had to look it up at Genesis chapter eight, verse 11. When Noah sent the dove out and it came back with the olive branch, the dove brought back a symbol of, to me, this is just me, my, what God's put on my heart. That olive branch was a symbol of yes, dried land, but a symbol of life opportunity promises a new hope. So the dove, the Holy Spirit, there's a lot in the word of God. There's a lot of scripture about this. And actually, we got a ton of scripture in today's devotional. I do not know that I'll uh, highlight all these or add them to the video, guys. So I'll go slowly as we get to them. If you want to jot them down and read them on your own time, whatever God puts on your heart. Amen. But let me, you know what, let me go ahead and read what I've got highlighted. But it's something that jumped out at me, guys. Give me a second here if I can see it. Verse 9. Uh, John 16, verse 9, and the NLT reads this. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Think about that. Worldly sin right here, this is Jesus, is that it refuses to believe in me. And then uh, verse 11, judgment will come because the roar of this world, which is Satan, so the ones that are refusing to believe in Jesus, the followers of this world, the followers of Satan, and the master of all lies and deception has already been judged. Guys, we're surrounded by people that have this coming to them. This is not a feel-good story. This is the truth. We are surrounded by family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, that that day is coming because they follow the rule of this world that the judgment is going to come on them. And that judgment's the uh, eternal death, which is brimstone, fire, gnashing of teeth, hell. Um, our devotional day is 365 devotions on the power of prayer. I'm going to read this slow. Again, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight scriptures throughout here. I don't think there's enough space on this channel to put all them in. Again, if you want to write them down, go for it. You will not run out of uh, references in the Bible that discuss the Holy Spirit. Uh, our devotional reads this. The Holy Spirit takes on many forms. Go look in the mirror right now. You're looking at one form right there. The, the, the vessel. This vessel is a dwelling, a temple of the Holy Spirit. God's word backs that up. As the wind or breath, 
we just talked about that. The Holy Spirit invisibly but powerfully enters your world. That is Acts 2.2. 2. As a dove, the Holy Spirit takes on the characteristics of the gentleness and peace he provides you with. That is Luke 3.22. As water, the Holy Spirit cleanses and washes you. That is John 7, verses 37 through 39. As a cloud, the Holy Spirit leads you down the right road. That is Exodus chapter 16, verse 10. As dew, the Holy Spirit refreshes you. That is Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. As the fire, the Holy Spirit refines you, bringing out the best in you. Man, bringing out all them impurities like fine gold, the purest of gold, all the impurities have been removed. That's what the Holy Spirit is now doing inside of us, guys. And I like to picture it like this, you know, where the guy says that this body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. What's your temple look like inside? It may look good on the outside, but what's the inside look at? Is, you know, is the, the bed messed up? Is there trash on the floor, dishes in a sink, parables? Guys, I'm speaking in a parable here. But what, what does your inside? And that's your heart. You know, the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart because that's that's from from it to close the wellspring of life. We go on and on about that. But just visualize these things. If the Holy Spirit has made your body this temporary vessel, a dwelling place, finding you worthy to live in and inhabit, what are you doing? What's your inside look like? Are you keeping it clean for him the best you can with his help, with his comfort? Amen. Um, that's Isaiah 4 4. As the anointing oil, the Holy Spirit soothes and heals you. That's Acts 10, 38. As the still small voice, the Holy Spirit whispers to your innermost self. That's 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13. Pray to the Holy Spirit today in all his facets. Allow him to be your power, peace, cleanser, guide, refresher, refiner, soother and intimate advisor uh oh intimate i like that lyric guys you know i like that word intimate advisor folks i love this one and then we got a little poem here we're going to finish with and again i can't tell you what to do or how to do it all i can do is give examples of what i do my morning prayer every day i pray to god the father god the son and god the holy spirit i thank all three of them i praise them all but i give god all the glory I thank the Holy Spirit for finding me worthy to, to live in, to dwell in. I thank him for reminding me of everything. That I thank him for comforting me, bringing all things to remembrance, for teaching me, for uh, interceding on my behalf. I thank the Holy Spirit for being the same power that lives in me that raised Jesus Christ from the grave. Guys, maybe some of you aren't thanking the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're just praying to God or just praying to Jesus. Man, don't forget, don't forget the Holy Spirit. If you truly believe God had, you know, three in one, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we got to quit leaving out the Holy Spirit. Truly, truly important. Again, that Holy Spirit, when you believe in your heart and you say with your mouth, Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life, bam, that Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of you now. So it's the same spirit we all got. And then we have a poem here. I'm going to try to read this one, folks, by Christina Rossetti. As the wind is thy symbol, so forward our goings. As the dove, so launch us heavenwards. As water, so purify our spirits. As a cloud, so abate our temptation. As dew, so revive our languor. As fire, so purge out our dross. And that's just a poem that's backed up by all them scriptures we just read in this devotional, guys. I think, I believe this is God saying, don't forget the engagement ring I gave you. The Holy Spirit is like an engagement ring promising that we belong to God. We are now his. We are his fiance, whatever you want to call it, guys, however you want to view it. Again, the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't be doing these videos. We wouldn't have we wouldn't have breath in our lungs. We talked about that the other day. You know, spirit is breath. Spirit is life. Word of God is life. So, guys, I think this is just a beautiful wake up call or reminder. Maybe some of you need to change up. Maybe you feel like your prayer life's gotten stagnant and rep repetitious. Me and my brother just talked about it this morning. It feels like that. Change it up. 
get the Holy Spirit more involved because you cannot communicate to God without the Holy Spirit. Pretty important. It'd be like trying to pick up your cell phone and there's no towers out there. Your cell phone's useless. So, you know, that I like to look at the Holy Spirit as that wireless connection never lose a signal between us and God the Father. Amen. So guys, thank you so much for joining today. Until tomorrow, the last day of June, June the 30th, enjoy the rest of your day. Keep praising the Holy Spirit, but keep giving God all the glory. Amen. And we'll see what the Lord says there. I love you guys.